Welcome to this Adarin screencast. Today we're going to talk about trust access within Adarin. Well, first of all, what is trust access? Well, trust access is designed for organizations that have predefined polygons that they want to search. So rather than defining a grid reference or drawing an area on the map, they can load one of these polygons in straight away and search it. So as the name implies, this was designed initially for organizations like wildlife trusts who maybe have uh, wildlife reserves they want to search. But also this is of use to maybe partner organizations that want to search other predefined polygons, maybe designated sites such as triple SIs or SACs. So how does it work? Well, we're not going to show you the admin interface, but suffice to say, as an LERC, we would receive a shapefile containing all the polygons. We then create a geometry collection, give it a name, import those polygons into the collection, and then finally assign an organization access to that particular collection. So, if your organization has access to, or trust access within a Darin, when you log in, at the top you'll see this menu icon of trust. If you click on that, you'll then see this lower option here, My Geometry Collections. So if you click on that, you'll then uh, see a screen here listing the collections that you have access to. So in my case, I've got access to four different collections. I'm going to select here the collection triple SIs. You'll then see a list of all the polygons making up this particular collection. So you'll see the polygon name, you'll see description, you'll see type, area, and also the date that collection was created. So at the right hand, on the right hand side here you have two icons. The first one is a quick view icon. So we can just select one of these and quickly view it. We can see a map of it, see where that particular area is. At the bottom here you'll see the option for search. So you can either select that option there to go straight to the search interface or you can use the second icon on the right here. Let's just look at one more polygon before we move across and show you how to search one of those polygons. So there we go, we've got a nice little reserve there, a nice little, a little triple SI. So let's click on the search icon now. <clears throat> so this now takes us over to the search interface with that polygon already loaded, ready for us to search. So we've got quite a few options here which we can use to filter the search to get just uh, what it is that we're looking for. You'll see here we can specify a buffer, so maybe I'll specify a buffer of 100 meters. We can change the resolution filter, so if we want to see poor resolution records or maybe we just want to see very high resolution records, we can change that. I'm going to leave that at one kilometer. Under species categories here, we can select if we want to see priority species, species of conservation concern, locally important species, or need other species. So I don't want to see any uh, sensitive species here, so I'm just going to select other species. The other options here, I'm not going to change any of these, but you can specify attacks on group uh, or even an individual species. You can select a particular status. You can select various dates or verification level or even a, a specific recorder. And finally, you can also return uh, habitat information and de designated sites for that particular polygon. So I'm happy with these options now. Basically, I've just selected uh, other species. I've selected my search area. I've selected a buffer of 100 meters. So I'm going to click on search now. So the system will go away and return, hopefully, all the records for that particular polygon matching the criteria I've put in. So it's come back with uh, 1,437 species. So we've got three tabs here on the results page. The map shows you obviously the polygon you've searched with the buffer visualized as well and a bit of information here about the various criteria you've put in. At the top you can click on species records to see the actual species records. I can click on one of these and see all the information about that particular record. If I select one more there we go, the map zooms there and shows you the resolution of the record as well and where it is within the polygon. I can also click on species map here which will load all those records up and show them on the map. Now you'll see here the icons are black, that's because these are other species. If it was priority species you'd see red icons or indeed you'd see orange or yellow for a species of conservation concern are locally important. But you can see all the icons there. Some of the icons are circular meaning they're higher resolution records. The square icons there, they are uh, one kilometer uh, resolution records. If you hover over an icon, you can see the various records 
that have been recorded to that particular grid reference. The other things you can do on this page on the top right hand corner is you can download the records. So I can click on the little download icon and see various options here. I can download a shape file of those records either as point, uh, polygon, uh, point or polygon uh, uh, data. I can also download this, the, the actual search area uh, as, a, as a shape file. I can also download the individual species records as a CSV and there's also an option there for an EMAP or XML file. That's more for testing so don't worry about that. The other option we've got here is the little globe icon which actually allows you to visualize all this data within the Cofnod eMapper system. So if I click on that, it'll take us over in a new tab to, to eMapper. Okay, so eMapper is now loading the data in. We've got a little warning here because you'll remember in the search options we selected just other species, so species without a specific designation. So EMAP is warning us here that those species records by default are switched off. I'm going to say to show those records anyway. Then we have the option to either go to the map, view the summary information or take a tour. So if you've not used EMAPA before, I'd suggest you take the tour, which will guide you through the various features of EMAPA. I'm just going to click on go to map and there we can see all our records. So eMapper has uh, numerous options down the right hand side here allowing you to visualize the data in different ways hopefully making it very useful to you. Well that really concludes this Adarin screencast so I hope you found it useful. Don't forget to get in touch with us if you wish to uh, via info at uh, bis.org.uk or using the contact information at the bottom of the Adarin webpage. Thanks for watching.